Hello, God bless you. Welcome to Daily Bread and Water, where we take a daily look at a Bible verse. Because just like we need that physical food and water for our physical bodies, we also need that spiritual bread and water for our spiritual bodies. Jesus says that we cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we're just giving you an appetizer. It's up to you to be a Berean. Search the scriptures for yourself, finish the meal, and read the rest of the chapter for yourself. Jesus says, For those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they shall be filled. Today we'll be looking at two verses that I talk about quite often, but I think they're very important. 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is done in us. So if you go around thinking, telling people that you're perfect, that you don't have no sin, you're lying to yourself. And the truth of God is not in you. I like the addition in verse 10. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. It said that if we say we don't have sin, in verse 8, that we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Here it says that we make God a liar. And his word is not in us. His word is truth. Jesus is the word. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus is not in us. He's not, the Holy Spirit is not dwelling in us. If we say that we have no sin. I think these are important to know. Because you know sometimes people. They think they're perfect. And they say they don't sin. Now John is writing to. Christian believers. He's not writing to. People who. Haven't come to save knowledge of Jesus Christ. And he's saying if we say that we have no sin, we're deceiving ourselves. We're making God a liar. Because the truth of God's word is not in us. So, I pray that you take this to heart. Know that you're not perfect. And no one else is either. There's no one above me. I'm not above anybody else. There's no one better than me. I'm not better than anyone else. You're not better than anybody else. They're not better than you. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. So don't think you ever get to a point in this life. Now in the afterlife, when we're in heaven, then yeah, we will take off this corruption and put on incorruption. We'll take off the sinful nature and put on a sinless nature. But until that day comes, when we're still in the ark and we still have breath, and before that trumpet sounds, we are going to mess up. We're going to sin. Because God's continuing to mold us into who He's wanting us to be. But it's not, it's not a finished product right away. We're still going to sin. And if we think that we got everything figured out, we're deceiving ourselves. Well, I pray you got something out of the video. If you did, give God glory. Remember, always read the word for yourself. Don't take my word or message for it. Be a Berean. Search the scriptures for yourself. You know, we all have this void in our life. Some call it a God-shaped hole. And we try to fill that void with everything that the world has to offer. You may try to fill that void with sex, with alcohol, with drugs, with money with friendship, with popularity, with advancements in your career, promotions. You may try to fill it with cars, with, with houses, but nothing can fill that void. You know, you may try to fill that void and hit rock bottom. Or you may try to fill that void. You may achieve what you're seeking. Whether it be houses. Or money or cars. 
You may get that, but you could still be in a crowded room and still feel alone. And the reason is, is because only God can fill that void. That's why it's called the God-shaped hole. And that void is there because we are all sinners. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. There's none of us that is righteous. No, not a one. You see, originally, in the garden, God walked with man. We see in Genesis chapter 3 that God walked in the garden in the cool of the evening when Adam and Eve hid. Why they hide? Because sin separated us from God. And not only does sin separate us from God, it creates a valley between God and man. And with each sin, that valley gets deeper in water. Now the only way to atone for that sin and for God to fill that void in your life, that God-shaped hole, is by the shedding of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. That's the only way that that valley can be atoned. In the Old Testament, they used to use the blood of bulls and goats, of animal sacrifices. They were a temporary bridge. Like you see there, the little rope bridge. Why they're a temporary bridge is because as the person would sin again, they'd have to offer another animal. And their sin would create a deeper and wider valley, causing the bridge to collapse. There's nothing that can bridge that gap between God and man, not animal sacrifices, not works. It's only Jesus and what he did on the cross. You know, it's like you're in a jail cell. The jailer opens the door and he says, you're free to go. Someone paid your bill. But you're relying on your own works, on the fact that you could be a good enough person so you stay in that cell saying, no, I'm good. I'm a good person. I can get out of here on my own. You deny the free ticket to get out of jail. And if you let sin continue to create that valley, then you will be eternally separated from God. And that's what it looks like. It means hell because the punishment for, for our sin is death. If you don't trust in Jesus to fill that God-shaped hole, then hell is where you'll spend eternity. Hell is not rock sunk concerts and orgies. Hell is suffering, torture, and torment, day and night forever, with no relief. I don't want you to go there, neither does Jesus. Jesus always existed. Jesus is God. Jesus left his throne in heaven. He became flesh. He wasn't an angel. He wasn't a ghost. He was flesh and blood and bone. He was born of a virgin. He was fully God and fully man. He wasn't a prophet. He lived a perfect sinless life. He came to earth to die. That's why he left his throne in heaven was to die for us. And just like the animal sacrifice had to be completely perfect, with no spot, no blemish, no defect. Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for us. He died a brutal death. Suffered God's wrath in our place. The punishment we deserve for our sins was poured out on Jesus. Our sins, past, present, and future, died on the cross with Jesus. Our sins were nailed to that cross, and Jesus' blood covered those sins. Jesus died redeeming, buying us back. When we put our trust in that Jesus died for our sins and bought our free ticket into heaven, then Jesus builds that permanent bridge between us and God. 
and one day in heaven we will walk with God. We'll see God face to face. But you have to have Jesus in your heart. There's a big difference between knowing who Jesus is, knowing what he did for you. Just knowing Jesus is like sending a celebrity a message on social media. That's a big difference between sending a message on social media and actually knowing that celebrity personally. You eat together, you have meals together, you watch movies together, you children play in the yard together. Just like with a celebrity, there's a big difference between knowing who Jesus is intellectually and what he did for you and actually having Jesus in your heart. Just knowing who Jesus is and what Jesus did for you is like me giving you a bottle of water. The bottle of water is in your hand and it's unopened. You're still thirsty because even though you're holding the bottle, you still have to do your part, open it and drink it. Jesus' sacrifice on the cross was like handing on you the bottle of water. You have to do your part, believe in him, and accept his free gift. When you have Jesus in your heart, you'll talk to him in prayer. You'll read his word, the Bible. You'll put Jesus first, before your family, before your job, before your money. Yeah, we'll still sin, but you'll you want to please him. You won't want to do what you used to do. You will want to please God. So Jesus is coming back to set up his earthly kingdom. And the requirement to enter the kingdom is that we must be absolutely, absolutely perfect without sin. And there's no one that's without sin. All of us face eternal judgment and separation from God. That's why we must receive Jesus in our life as Lord. He is the only one that will live a perfect life for us and be became the substitute for our sins. He rose from the dead, proving that he was God, because death and the grave had no power over him. And he wants to save us from the penalty of our sins and give us eternal life. But we must first individually receive him. This is what it means to believe in Jesus. And just like Works do not get you into heaven. Neither does just knowing who Jesus is. You have to have him in your heart. It's that simple. It's ABC simple, in fact. A is for admit. Admit your, that you need Jesus. Admit you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Admit that you can't do this on your own, that you need Jesus. B is for believe. Believe in your heart that Jesus is who he says he was. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and was buried, and God raised him from the dead. Believe that he paid the price for your sins, and that Jesus died for you. See, it's for call, or confess. Confess that Jesus is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus is Lord. Call in the name of the Lord. Confess, repent of your sins, which means, repent means to turn away, to change your mind. Here's a sample prayer, dear God, I am a sinner, I need your forgiveness, because it separates me from you. Thank you for loving me so much that you sent your son Jesus to pay the penalty for my sin. I know I can never be good enough to earn salvation because it is a gift from you. I believe Jesus Christ lived a sinless life and was crucified, died, and was buried. And after three days, you raised him to life again. I am sorry, and I repent and turn away from my sins. I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life as my Savior. I accept your free gift of salvation, and I place my trust in you only. Thank you, Jesus. And from this moment on, my life is yours. Amen. Just some little sample prayer like that. Don't have to be that exact prayer. Just something from your heart. 
just crying out to Jesus, just turning to him. When you do, you'll be saved. Because you know, you're not alive by accident. You were created for a purpose. God didn't just create you just to fill the earth. God had a plan for you. When God formed you in your mother's womb, God had a plan for your life. And when you accept Jesus' free gift, and you invite Jesus into your life, then God gives you a new heart. And God begins to mold you into the person that he created you to be when he put you in, his mother, in your mother's womb. So say you want to build a house with some Legos. When he dumped the Legos on the table, as you see here in the picture, it doesn't look like a house yet, does it? Now we have to snap the bricks together. And that's how God's molding us into who he created us to be. God's not throwing, just throwing us out there. He's continually molding us into who he created us to be. Because even though we're saved, we're still, we still sin. Because we're unfinished. God's still working on us. He's still molding us into who he created us to be. And I'm not talking about religion here. I'm talking about how you can be saved today. Religion will put you in chains. and will tell you what to do and what not to do. But Jesus will set you free right now. There is nothing that you need to do. So don't wait. Don't put off Jesus. Don't put him off till you get to the point in time in your life where you are financially secure or whatever it is you may be holding on to that you want to be have this before you come to Christ. Come to him now. Or don't wait till you stop a sin, like say you don't you want to wait till you stop drinking. Come to him now and he will help you take that away. Because Jesus is really coming back very soon. And you don't have time to wait. Tomorrow just might be one day too late. And you don't want to miss it because you you were going to do it tomorrow. Do it now. So turn to Jesus today. Well, I pray you got something out of this. If you did, give God glory. Can't wait to see what the Lord has for us tomorrow. Hope you have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow, God willing, or maybe we'll see you in the clouds.